Hey guys, Ivan here. So, in this photo right here, you're looking at your top 3 from last night's show, Texas Pro. Andrew Jacked, who stole this show, he killed everybody, he sent Steve Kuklo into early retirement. Then you had Martin Fitzwater, surprisingly, ending up in second. And all the way down in third, you had Steve Kuklo, who was a heavy favorite to win this show. This is the second year that we all expected him to win. He lost last year to Ian, and this year he lost to both Andrew, who who has been doing bodybuilding for a couple of years now and Martin Fitzwater also a youngster basically so not a good not a good show for Steve especially if you consider the fact that he brought it to this show he was really conditioned he was big as usual he never really had the deepest separation his physique sort of looks dead always has been and that's why I was never really a big fan of his physique but he was a heavy favorite coming into this show last year he was second it was a very close second and I thought this year he's probably gonna do enough and win this show. This is his home, he lives in Texas, this was his show to lose and he lost it. One of the reasons why he didn't play second is back. Martin Fitzwater destroyed him in not just the back itself, but all the back poses, everything from behind on Martin was probably actually the best in this show, probably better than Andrew, but Andrew was so much better from the front. But as you can see, Martin's back looked ridiculous. Look at his back. I mean, it was really thick, really dense, really dry. The glutes were shredded, the hamstrings were peeled. He brought really good conditioning. He improved so much from last year it's crazy it's crazy what kind of changes he made he really really nailed it as far as conditioning as far as improving his physique in certain areas such as back such as glutes and hamstrings look at this again when he transitions from abs and thighs where he shows great side abs to most muscular look at the conditioning of the quads of the abs of the chest of the delts of the arms he really brought it this guy surprised us all basically last year he was good he wasn't bad but his conditioning was not very good I followed him a little, I, I noticed that he's all about bodybuilding, basically, this guy, I, I don't know him, but it looks like he's one of those guys that have zero interests in life aside from bodybuilding, and that is a good way to succeed in this if you have the right genetics of course and it seems like martin absolutely does and now when he paired up with branch warren they did a hell of a job so congratulations to martin and branch they killed this show and i'm sure martin is happy with what he brought and where he placed but if there wasn't for andrew he would have won this show and that would be a great way to qualify for the mr olympia he would be a star but unfortunately for him andrew pretty much stole this show he came out of nowhere and he destroyed this lineup and there were a lot of good guys in this show this is arguably the best show of the year maybe after arnold classic and he destroyed it he killed everybody and what is insane is that this is actually him as him and his coach are saying at 75 80 percent why because his original plan was to do the arnold classic uk that was his main goal and this was <laughs> You can call this a warm-up show for Andrew, actually, because he was not ready, and you can see that. He definitely wasn't super conditioned in the glutes, he could have been much sharper in that area, but that was just the plan, they didn't have to be 100% for this show, they were planning to be 100% at uh, Arnold Classic UK, this was sort of a warm-up show. Flex Wheeler insisted he wanted to see Andrew do this show, he, he felt confident that, uh, that Andrew is gonna win, even at 80%, which came true, he didn't just win, he could have probably won this at like 60% <laughs> based on what I'm seeing because he is so much better than all of these guys, the only question really is how he's gonna place in the Mr. Olympia, that's the real question. So this is a very exciting time in bodybuilding this year, 2022 Mr. Olympia is going to be one of the best Mr. Olympias ever, and as much as I'm excited for it, I also feel kind of sad for, uh, for guys like Martin, who, who worked so hard and was supposed to win this show, but this guy just showed up out of nowhere and he took it away. Also, Steve Kugler, this guy is a veteran, he has been competing for so, so long, and when everybody thought he was gonna win Texas, again, a new guy shows up, a guy that they are saying is only doing bodybuilding for a couple of years, with so much superior genetics, who just showed up and killed everybody and destroyed Steve Kuklo and the rest of the lineup, so it's gotta be kind of depressing, you know, in bodybuilding, it doesn't matter how long 
you're doing this, a new guy with more talent shows up, he doesn't even have to be as shredded as you are, look at, look at, uh, look at his glutes, Andrew's glutes compared to Steve Kuklo's glutes, to, uh, to Quinton's glutes, to Martin's glutes, he was definitely not even ready, not as them, and he's just genetically more blessed, you know, he has this crazy shape, crazy muscle bellies, crazy muscularity, crazy pop, 3D muscle, everything basically and he destroys them all and steve kuklo who was once sixth at the mr olympia what is he supposed to do to do another weaker level show to try to get a mr olympic qualification somehow or just maybe retire when he's still kind of at the top I don't know what he's gonna do, he didn't make any statements after after the finals, as you can see he posted this between the prejudging and the finals, and it seems like he felt confident enough that he thought he was gonna win this show, he says, ready to keep that title in Texas, so it looks like he actually believed he was gonna win, and there's Flex Wheeler, Andrew's coach, saying good job trolling Steve probably because we all knew we all saw this everybody who watched the live stream and I'm sure everybody who was there we all saw the same thing Andrew stole the show he was a class above everybody else here it wasn't so clear who was gonna be second third fourth or fifth and so Steve Kuklo didn't end up in that second even though it seemed kind of like he's probably gonna be there but Martin deservedly so placed ahead of him he took that second spot but i think the difference between andrew and martin was rather large from behind structurally of course andrew is is far superior but he was not super peeled here so i felt like martin beat him in the back poses both back double and back lat spread as you can see right here he looks better basically from behind and that's it and he looks far better than steve kuklo so i think he deserved to be second but as far as him challenging andrew no no from behind yes he was better but that's only two poses everything else side and front Andrew was just simply another level in the side poses also you could have seen that his glutes could be sharper but from the front and he was turning to the front very often it was night and day difference look at this and now Kamal is trying to compare against him and it's not even funny he dwarfs him so much it's not even it's not even funny and that's why Kamal shouldn't have placed any higher than he did actually he managed to be in that top four and Kamal somehow fell in that fifth spot and I think I see that it's mainly because of conditioning but because of these guys were so much bigger than him he could not have placed higher than fourth Steve Kukla had a lot less details than Kamal and less complete back but he was just simply bigger and size this show was all about size pretty much the guy that won was the biggest guy andrew was actually 292 at this stage that's ridiculous look at his front double compared to kamal <laughs> night and day difference and basically yeah he was the biggest guy and he was not the most conditioned guy but because of all that size and i gotta say because of this freaking glaze that he had it's 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 he did a really good job with that glaze he looked so polished i don't know whose advice was this is it a trick from flex wheeler or is it george farah i don't know but whatever they did whoever told him to do this it worked really well as you can see in the official list i highlighted the top four but we all know who was the top four it looks like andrew was a clear winner from the front he was winning the pre-judging and the finals nothing changed he had a perfect score and also it looks like martin was uh, very firmly in that second place both after pre-judging and finals it looks like uh, kamal improved a little in the finals but it's probably because the other guys like martin and steve both faded a little and kamal pretty much stayed the same so he did a little better in the finals than he did the pre-judging but still wasn't enough for him to place higher than fourth and as far as the other placements you can pause this video and you can check them out see who placed where but i underlined i redlined a couple of names which i found very interesting so for example joe mackie now i thought joe mackie is gonna do much better based on the photos that i saw on instagram he looked like he was gonna bring something crazy to the stage but sometimes very often actually more often than not guys who look great on instagram they don't look that good on stage obviously that wasn't the case with andrew he looked even better than what he looked in those videos and photos that we saw of him before but uh, joe mackie he looked like he was gonna be super full and super shredded but it looks like 
he was lean, he was shredded, but it looks like he was really flat. I don't know what happened. I don't feel like this is simply Joe Mackey at his best, and that's where he deserves to be. Ninth spot at Texas Pro. Yeah, it was a tough show, but I think he could be better. I think he came in flat, and something went wrong. I don't know what was it. Maybe maybe he did something crazy with insulin, because Milos is coaching him. I hope Milos is gonna make a statement about this and, and explain. Maybe, on the other hand, this is simply it. Maybe he just looks too good on Instagram, and when he compares to the other guys, he doesn't look that good, but I don't think that's the case. Looking at this uh, posing routine, especially from the front, he looks super flat. He looks like something went wrong, and I ha I don't know what exactly. I hope I will find out. If I do, I will let you know, guys. But Joe Mackey placed ninth, unfortunately. And the other name that I highlighted, which I found very interesting as well, and I made previous videos about him, Roman Fritz, placed 13th again yeah again i think he was also 13th at tampa and uh, he was hoping that he was gonna bring something better to the stage uh, the last photos of him on his instagram that he posted he looked so much improved i thought he would have a chance of placing like in top six at this show but no he, he basically had no chance of, of doing that not in this show this was a tough show maybe some other show some other day but no not here he got this call out uh, based on numerical order, fortunately or probably more likely unfortunately for him. Standing next to these guys, all of his weaknesses were exposed. And of course the most noticeable one, the lack of size. He's simply not on this level muscularity wise. These guys here are freaking monsters, the guys from the top 5. They all have a ton of muscle on their frames. And even though Roman was really conditioned, he just didn't have that you know, basically, muscularity. He didn't have enough muscle on his frame, and that's about it. He was shredded, as you can see, his hamstrings, his glutes, his back too. He was detailed and shredded, but not big enough. Did he improve from Tampa to Texas? I would have to say yes. And I think that was his only goal, pretty much, uh, for Texas after Tampa. He said he doesn't care where he places as long as he improves and doesn't look as bad as he did at Tampa. Did he do that once again? Yes, I think he did. I think he came in fuller. From the front, he just, you know, couldn't really change much. His legs definitely are very flat. His arms also, I would have to say his chest to pretty much everything is just uh, underwhelming. It just isn't big enough, muscular enough. What I liked most about his physique are actually his back poses because of how conditioned he was. Look at this. I mean, look how shredded, how peeled, how detailed he actually was. But once again, not enough muscle, not enough muscle mass to go against the big boys. As I said, sometimes, very often, bodybuilders look much, much better in their photos on their Instagram than they look on the stage. It's very rare that somebody lives up to their hype like Andrew Jack just did. And what I'm wondering right now is what's gonna be the case with this guy, with this monster, Mikal Krizio. Because this guy, standing alone in his photos, honestly, for me personally, looks better than Andrew Jack. That's just what I think. He has flaws, his glutes are definitely not as good, and his back could be better, but nobody is saying that Andrew is perfect. He also has not, not super shredded glutes and his hamstrings could come up. There are some weaknesses on his physique as well, so nobody is really perfect, and uh, Mihal Krizio is not perfect, he has flaws, but other than that, he is a hell of an impressive bodybuilder. And Michal is not an amateur, he has been competing in Elite Pro for years. There are so many stage photos of him. Andrew is new, but Michal, he has been doing this bodybuilding thing for a long time. It's not like he has a lot of great uh, gym photos or like uh, locker room photos, no, no. His photos, many of them are from stage, but there are the ones like this, where he looks like a freaking alien. And I think it's very, very likely that if, if this guy brings solid conditioning to pretty much any Mr. Olympic qualifier, he's going to do some serious damage just like Andrew Jack did. And there are guys, for example, like Milo Sharchev, who are saying that Mikhail Krizio is the real deal, that hype is real. He saw him in person and he says that even Steve Weinberger was impressed. So let's wait for this guy to show up. It's going to be... Such an amazing, such an exciting year for bodybuilding and 2022 Mr. Olympia is going to be arguably the best Mr. Olympia ever, of all time.
We'll see what Mikhail Krizh is gonna do, but uh, we know that Andrew just qualified for the Mr. Olympia. So now the question is, if his win at Texas, one of the toughest show of this year, was so convincing, where is he gonna place at the Mr. Olympia? Does he have the potential to win the Mr. Olympia? I think he does, and based on what Flex uh, Wheeler has to say, he thinks that he has the potential to win it, but not this year. Flex Wheeler thinks that Andrew is gonna be in top 6 this year, and do I see that? I absolutely do, and I possibly see him placing higher. Do I see him beating Big Ramy, Hadi Chopin, Brandon Curry or an improved version of William Bonac without a gyno this year? I don't. I don't think so. Not this year. Maybe some of these guys come completely off, but as it is right now, I don't think so. As far as 4th or 5th beating Nick Walker or Hunter Labrada, well, based on their previous versions from last year... I think that's possible, I think Andrew is probably gonna be 4th or 5th, now as you can see this is Hunter Labrada right now at 290, guest posing, and he looks awesome, I mean, he looks great, he's very complete, he's very round, he's a big guy, but is he better than Andrew? I don't think he has that freak factor, I don't think he has that crazy shape, I don't think he has what it takes to beat him. Maybe it's gonna be a different thing on the stage uh, against Steve Kuklo and uh, Martin Fitzwater. They are not top four at the Mr. Olympia like Hunter, so maybe it's gonna be a different story in person, especially if Hunter improves, and I believe he will. But again, can I see Andrew beating Hunter this year? I think I can. Now the question is, can Andrew beat Nick Walker this year? Well, Nick did comment on Andrew after his showing at Texas briefly. Before that, on his podcast, on actually Fuad's podcast, and Nick was not so sure about uh, Andrew, and I think that's reasonable. He never saw him on stage compared to the other pros, and you can't be sure if somebody's gonna look good based on their Instagram photos. You guys know that. So Nick wasn't so sure, and now he can be pretty sure, and his comment is simply, we got ourselves a good Olympia coming up, meaning Andrew looks very good. And again, in my personal opinion, based on what we saw last year from Nick Walker, I think Andrew has a good chance of actually beating him and placing in that top 5, top 4, but based on the way Nick is improving, you know, the rate that he's improving at, I don't know, I'm not so sure, because last year he made so much progress between all those shows, and this year he had a full off-season, an entire off-season to improve, so I'm expecting something special of Nick this year, and this is probably the reason why so many people expect him to potentially win the Mr. Olympia, because he is known for improving super fast in short time, and now where he had a long time, a long off season, he's probably gonna improve significantly, and this is another photo that he posted in which his arms look literally bigger than his head, literally. So he, he's gonna be a super freak on that stage, and Andrew, he has an amazing shape, really good aesthetics, but is he gonna be freaky enough, is he gonna be complete enough? Andrew has those weaknesses like hamstrings, and Nick is known for having one of the craziest hamstrings of all time, and also Andrew has a little bit smaller arms, not really smaller, but not as full, not as full as around as Nick, for example, so Nick is probably gonna expose those weaknesses of Andrew, but then Andrew is gonna expose Nick's weaknesses, such as uh, the lack of aesthetics, small waist, stuff like like that. So it's definitely going to be an awesome Mr. Olympia. I can't wait for it to happen. It's going to be so crazy. Uh, whatever you guys think about Andrew Jack and his potential placement at the Mr. Olympia, tell me in the comment section down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And for more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.